Hey everyone, welcome back to this channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to capture planets through an amateur telescope and get results like this or even like this that I've captured in the past. Unlike deep sky, plane dust photography requires different equipment and techniques to do so. And in this video I'm going to show you one of my telescopes that I use to capture planets and go over main aspects of plane dust photography. My name is George Kinkov and you're watching Astro Creation. So it is morning of July 24th and actually each day is getting better and better for capturing bright planets like Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. When we capture deep sky objects, we usually take long exposure pictures and in terms of a telescope we can use small refractor or even a lens that has a short focal length. But if you want to take a nice picture of a planet, you need a telescope with bigger aperture and higher focal length. The aperture allows you to reveal more details of a planet and high aperture will make planet size bigger on the camera sensor. And behind me right now is my setup for planet capturing. So let's look at the setup a little closer. My main imaging telescope is Skywatcher 150 PDS. It is 6 inch Newton reflector telescope that has 750 mm focal length which is not enough if you want to capture a planet, so I use a borrow lens that helps me to increase the focal length. And in my case, it is Teleview PowerMate 5X, and the job it does is increasing the focal length of the telescope five times, which makes it equivalent to 3750 mm, which is good if you want to capture a planet. The camera that I use to capture planets is ZWO462MC. It is a camera that was dedicated to take pictures of planets on moon surface. And uh, basically this astronomy cameras or any different brand is really what you want to use to capture a planet since they were dedicated to do this. Uh, what if you have a DSLR camera? Can you take a picture of a planet? Well, technically, yes, you can, but the results between the DSLR camera and uh, the dedicated astronomy cameras are really different. And with the dedicated astronomy camera, you're definitely going to get much better results. Although I personally started my journey in planet astrophotography using a DSLR camera, on the screen you can see some images of planets that I've captured using this camera in the past. And uh, if you don't have a dedicated astronomy camera, but you have a DSLR camera, you can get pretty same results or even better. And if you're interested in this topic, leave me a comment down below and I'm gonna record a video where I explain how to take a picture of a planet using a DSLR camera. Also in front of the camera, I have ZWO UV air cut filter. Uh, the filter blocks infrared and ultraviolet light from reaching the sensor of the camera and as a result I can get sharper images. I have two cords that are running from the camera. The first one is just a regular USB cord and the second one is ST4 cable that uh, technically you need for guiding. Even though I'm not doing deep sky photography tonight and personally I never used ST4 cable for guiding, I'm still gonna use this one for planetary imaging because I will be guiding on a planet and I'm gonna cover this part later in this video. And everything is mounted on the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro. Also I want to show you this atmospheric dispersion corrector. When you capture planet images you can see some atmospheric dispersion that looks like uh, kind of blue and red color shades around the object you're shooting. This corrector helps to reduce this effect and make your images much better. Meanwhile, this accessory is optional and you may want to use one if you have a telescope with aperture like 6 inch or bigger because this corrector doesn't work well with the smaller telescopes. So basically that is all you need for plain terrestrial photography. It is a telescope, barrel lens, a camera and atmospheric dispersion corrector that I mentioned earlier but once again this thing is optional. And once I have everything set up and good to go, what I basically do is just manually point my telescope to the planet that I want to capture. And I do that using a finder scope that's located right here on the top. And let me just uh, rotate the telescope a little so you'll see it. So that's the finder scope that I use to target my bigger telescope on a planet. All right, so I just got planet Saturn in the camera field of view and uh, I need to adjust exposure and bring it down a little so uh, we'll, I hope we'll see more details. Uh, let's adjust gain and exposure down. Okay. I'm 
So what you're looking at right now is the life of your planet Saturn. And as you can see, this planet appears really nice on the camera sensor. Uh, we can definitely spot the Saturn's globe. And of course, there are Saturn rings, uh, which is the best feature of this planet. The only thing, the seeing doesn't really look good so far. And uh, I have some clouds that are passing above me right now, so that I may have some problems with observation conditions. But overall, the picture looks quite good. And I hope I'll be able to get some results later when I process uh, all the data that I'm about to capture right now. So I've already started capturing process and uh, I'm recording uh, three minute videos of planet Saturn. And yes, you just heard right, I'm recording a video of a planet. And if you want to take a picture of a planet, we really want to record a video because if you look at the structure of a video, basically a video is a sequence of really short exposures. And uh, if we look at the camera settings, uh, my camera is taking 29 frames per second right now, which technically means that each second uh, my camera takes 29 separate sub-exposures. And over the course of three minutes, uh, I will take a thousand of these exposures that I'll be stacking and processing later in the special software. So what you're looking at right now is the life here of planet Jupiter. And just look how nice this planet appears on the camera sensor. It looks much bigger than planet Saturn and uh, we definitely can see more details in Jupiter atmosphere and there is some cloud structure. The image of Jupiter just became a little dimmer. That's because uh, the clouds passing uh, in front of the planet Jupiter right now. But I still be capturing this planet for the next, uh, like maybe 30 minutes to an hour, depends on what the weather will allow me to do. And hope I'll be able to get really nice results after I process all the data that I'm about to capture later this night. By the way, the app that I'm using to record videos of planets is called Fire Capture, and that's the app that you want to use if you want to take a picture of a planet. It has a lot of features, and uh, one of the best features that I like about this app is called Auto Guiding, which technically allows you to guide using a planet. So what Fire Capture does, it records video of a planet first, and then using uh, basically the same frames that it takes for video recording, it uses the same frames to guide on the planet so it tracks all the movements of a planet and adjusts the mount position if it needs to so that was it for tonight guys i hope you got an idea of what planet capturing looks like and if you like this video please hit the like button and leave me a comment down below these small actions will actually help my channel to grow faster and increase my audience also please consider subscribing to my channel because in the future i'm planning to shoot more videos about planet capturing and one of my next videos on this topic will be about editing process and also I'm in the middle to make one more video about main tips for plane raster photography that I personally use to get nice results. At the end I'll show you final pictures of planets I was able to get during this night of observations. Uh, hope to see you in future videos and uh, until then, clear skies! <laughs>